Well, I don't know why you call them weak, but I mean, be that as it may, I mean, the problems they address are problems we philosophers have deeply cared about for many centuries. I mean, welfare, health, I mean, what's good or bad for our societies. So what I wanted to do was mainly to learn from these disciplines and see how philosophical reflection on uh, the good society could uh, be improved. Well, they have been learning indeed uh, throughout the last uh, 50 years. Uh, physicians, pharmacologists, have been testing new drugs before they bring in them to markets, and they have been quite successful at that. I mean, most drugs that we uh, see in markets at least don't kill us. So now economists for the last 10 years have been discussing, can we test our policy interventions in a way that gives us any evidence about their future success? Well, they are trying, uh, physicians are watching, and we philosophers can contribute to, to this debate and see whether what has been successful in medicine can be also successful in economics. Well, because scientists and philosophers love experiments. So you have a controversy about a factual hypothesis. I mean, is this true or false? Ideally, you run an experiment and the experiment sets the disagreement. But uh, that's the old ideal during the last decade or so. We have learned that experiments might fail, that people might cheat, that ex experimental results might not reproduce. So one of the pressing questions today is how we can improve experiments. I mean, how can, how can we make them better? Uh, and here I hope philosophy can make a contribution. Well, because experiments are good when they give us the whole truth, but often we don't have the whole truth. There's uncertainty. And experiments might be manipulating, exploiting, exploiting this uncertainty for somebody else's benefit. Think of pharmaceutical companies and medical experiments. It has been said that pharmaceutical companies exploit the uncertainty in clinical trials to sell drugs that shouldn't be on the market. Okay, we don't want that. We want impartial experiments. We want tests that, even if there's uncertainty, don't benefit anybody in particular. And as a philosopher, what I have tried to do, to do is to show how uh, impartial experiments could be designed for the benefit, for the co common interest, for the benefit of us all and not just one of the stakeholders in a test. Well, that's a complicated question. You see, in the 40s and 50s, we had philosophers like Popper saying, uh, science is the model for the open society. Disagreements, open discussion, that's what science is. Now, in the 60s and 70s, we had historians like Kuhn saying, well, look, science is like society. There are communities in conflict and some win, some lose. So there is here an analogy that we should explore. And in the 90s and during the last decade, sociologists were saying, well, no, it's not a matter of science being like society. Science is society. It's just full of interest, conflict, and we should treat science as everything else. So I guess that for philosophers of my generation, what we have tried to do is to recover this Popperian ideal that there is something good in science for society, and we have been trying to explicate what's good in different manners. Not sure whether we have been very successful so far, but at least we are trying. Well, it all depends on the audience you want to engage. I have tried to engage different audiences in order to bridge this disciplinary conflict that I was mentioning in the previous questions. I mean, I would want, to be, I would want the dialogue about science to be as open and encompassing as possible, and I would want historians, sociologists, and philosophers to talk to each other. Uh, I have tried. Whether I have succeeded or failed, I leave it, this to the audience. Well, the obvious answer is you should study economics, but from those like me who come from a southern country, from a small region, you might wonder, where do I find a good training in economics? And teaching as I do at the Spanish Open University, UNED, my recommendation is go online. I mean, there are lots of MOOCs, these massive online courses that are free. Uh, the best universities in the world are offering them. So if you're thinking of studying um, philosophy of economics, first step, is, I mean, go and enroll in one of these free courses, see what the best economists are doing, see what you need to do in order to learn that, and then, I mean, find the philosophers that can match the expertise of these top economists around the world. <laughs>